right, we're back. And now we're going to do the bottom side. As I noted before, I will mix up two separate batches and I'll do one half at a time. What we're gonna do start with first is taking some scrap material and ripping swatches and placing them around this pocket here. This is where it locks in on the actual motorcycle on the front pads. And then we'll put some swatches around these. Um, this gives a little more rigidity around where the valve is going to be poking out or get bolted to right here. So then once we get those swatches added in there, then we'll lay our halves. So let's get started. All right, we have this side done. Um, as you can see, I had applied some swatches around here and around here, and then I forgot to note it earlier, but I do put it off of this corner right here because the material does get kind of stretched on this section here. And this section, the ECU or TCI section of the, of the motorcycle sits in this area. So I reinforce this section of it, as well as where the two sides meet to here this corner it tends to sometimes get thin so i put a little swatch down here overall working the air bubbles out of this section is generally fairly simple it takes a little while when you're doing these harder bends so you can understand why i put the uh, material the putty in there to help try to keep the bends to a minimal um, the extra layer also helps because it's a much smaller patch it's able to get the air bubbles out prior to putting the bigger sheets on, and then that helps work the air bubbles out. Uh, when I came down to here, it's harder to get these air bubbles out around here, so I use a, an old razor knife, and I'll poke a hole to the hard spot of the gel coat, and then work the air bubbles out through the hole, and then finish closing it off once it's all sealed to try to make sure I don't have any air bubbles around the actual bolt parts itself. Um, other than that, we are done with this one. Um, I'll stop the vid and I'll get set up and we will do the other side. All right, we are ready to go on the second one. So again, I have my stuff to make swatches with. We'll go ahead and apply that in here, lay it up the same way we did the other one. So we will, uh, I'm probably not gonna video it because it's gonna be the same exact thing as I did on the other side. Okay, we have the other side laid up. This is ready to go. So once this thing cures, we'll be able to remove it from the mold, trim off the excess, sand down the flanges all the way around and prepare it to join in. At this point, this is all done. So we're going to let this one cure up. And then we have once the other side of the first section that we did, I'll go ahead and lay that up. I'm not going to video it because it's identical to the same layup. So I'll get it laid up. But once I get it laid up, I'll shoot a video of it uh, completely laid up and uh, say anything or pointers that I have on there. All right, we have the bottom section all laid up. The top is uh, cured, still a little green. It's tacky. Um, that makes it a little better for uh, trying to bond up. Like I said, you can't lay both sides up without the material sagging and falling into the mold so I, that's why i do it in halves um, you can see the center line where it's overlapped it helps give the tank some backbone there and of course 
the strips and all of the corners. Um, and then so at this point, and we got the back layer on there, as I noted uh, earlier, that once I get this side on, then I add the backing layer. So it gives me three here. When I go to join them, I'll have to grind some of the, uh, the overlap out of this. So it'll bind, bond up to the tank really easy. But anyways, we're gonna let this cure. This is probably gonna uh, cure overnight. And then when I come back, um, we'll separate the uh, parts from the mold and I'll show you what they look like. Our, our parts are cured and we are ready to go ahead and remove them from the mold. So we'll start with this part first. Um, what I'll do is I'll get the screws, get them going. I'm gonna remove all the screws. I have to remove the flange bolts first and then I'll get the uh, the actual uh, fuel cap flange bolts out afterwards because they're two of them are covered underneath these. So I'll do a little uh, speed motion and we'll get this knocked out. Okay, so now that we have all of our bolts out, I use a uh, putty knife. This is my go-to putty knife. It's really a, a thick, so it's very little flex to it. And the corners have been rounded off and it's dulled so I don't scratch things a lot of times. So I use this a lot of times for opening my molds. So we start in the center line, do a little uh, wiggle so it'll get it popped a little loose. And as you see, it comes around fairly simple. Well, I tend to try to peel my molds away from the center line so that I don't uh, break or chip the uh, uh, the edge where the gel coat is meeting right here. So I try to keep it so I don't chip the gel coat. So we have that. So you can see there. And then sometimes it's a little push. There's our parts. And then as you'll see, here is the flashing that's left on the mold or the part once it's done. But all in all, great shape. And when I have it at this stage, that's what I use this for so I don't scratch the surface. I run through and I clean off. These are like razor blades, so you gotta be really careful with those. So I'll just go around and pop this off. Voila. I'm gonna take the edge to knock off any of the sharp edges. Now that that's all done, as you can see, voila. So now this part is done. So it has to, uh, I take my die grinder with my cutting wheels, 1 16th inch thick fiberglass reinforced cutting wheels uh, on a pneumatic die grinder. And you can see I have a nice parting line. I typically cut a little bit above where this parting line is at, simply so when I have uh, glue I have a lot more area and I'd want the glue to squish Outward so then whenever this is all glued together then I can take my belt sander and I clean the the edges up really nice But voila, there's the first top tank half. It looks really really good and We can move on to the other part So let me grab that and again, we'll do a little speed motion. There's only a couple bolts on this and then we can move along, so. Okay, we have all the bolts out, with the exception of this bottom one here. Um, my flange bolts, they're out of the mold. And of course, these flange bolts here. So again, we take putty knife and get it in between the mold 
flanges. Voila. There's that part. And then that'll be this part. Now, you may want to do this with gloves. Um, I have gotten myself with some splinters in here before, so I'm hoping I don't get one again now. So basically, I just lift the, uh, break the free, the part from the mold. And voila, comes right off. Look at that. Pretty as can be. So, we have our nice brass inserts. We have, you see where I put the, earlier in the, uh, the video, you see where I put the uh, polyvinyl, or the, excuse me, the vinyl ester resin down first, and then the gel coat was sprayed on top of it. So now you have a nice uh, surface um, that's vinyl ester resin. So depending on how the gasket seals around this area, um, I make sure I got a good cover. Whenever I grind this hole out for the up tube that goes from the valve in there, the, the tank will be getting an external internal sealer applied to it and that will seal off uh, the surface in there. Other than that, it looks good. Same thing will happen with this. It'll have to be trimmed with the die grinder with the uh, 16th inch cutting blade and then we'll go from there. So with these parts in general, once they are trimmed and I uh, We'll take and cut all the holes out first. I'll cut on this. It's molded into the part. So this section here will get cut out and uh, rounded out nice and clean right there. And then on this tank, these holes on the two valve ports will get cleaned out really nice. And then when I take a, I have a two inch, uh, uh, sanding disc pneumatic sanding disc I take in I'll run that all over the surfaces where there's exposed fiberglass like this and basically etch the surface and I do that so I make sure I have a good adhesion with the uh, port the, the port 15 uh, tank liner that I use so I'll etch this whole entire thing and then true up any of the edges because the glass is kind of rounded here. So when it gets trimmed off, it'll get sanded where this will be nice and flat, basically mimicking this surface here, out here. And then that is the glue surface to be glued on to this part of the tank. So the two halves will get joined after all this is all sanded. I'll apply my glues and then clamp the, the, the parts together. But we'll cover that a little bit here shortly. Whenever we come back, I'll have this all trimmed. I'll have it all sanded, show you what I mean, and we'll go from there. Okay, we're back. We got the, uh, the tank uh, rough trimmed. As you can see, all the there is some minor amounts left on there, but as I noted earlier, that gets uh, cleaned up once the final assembly is done. Then I can come through and true up the edges and make it nice and clean. But as you can see, the color change, you can see like a haze to it. Um, I use a... Like I said, a two inch grinder, I'll show you that here in a short bit. Um, but I clean, I etch everywhere inside the tank that that uh, tank sealant pour 15 is gonna get applied to once it gets poured in here. The inside of this hole is cut out with a Dremel tool um, and then polished out with a drum bit. So it needs a nice hole for the tank cap to get mounted onto. So as you can see, that's that. Here is the bottom side of the tank. And as you can see, I have a uniform thickness here. And same thing, uh, it's etched all the way around and the holes for the tank valves are put in place. So now, also in this, is nice and cleaned up and the glue is going to get applied on here and on the actual surface in there so they get bonded together using some clamps. This is my die grinder. It's a side right angle uh, and it uses a 1 16th inch fiberglass reinforced cutting wheel. Don't use anything less. Um, you can use a jigsaw, but I worry about jigsaws as they, the, the motion, reciprocating motion 
of the jigsaw could literally chip the gel coat so I don't ever use them. I always use this. I get nice clean cuts with this. If you don't have one, you can use an electric version. Um, they have like the angle grinders, a little four inch, four and a half inch. Um, and you can uh, mount that same disc on there and do that cut. This is my, my cheap little uh, two inch um, sander. Um, I use a multitude of different grips. Most of the time, this is a 60 grit. Now, be very careful when you're etching this that you don't grind a hole in it. I'm moving really, really fast in there. Um, and basically, when you see it, when you're etching it, you're going to see the fibers come up. Um, basically, what we're trying to do with the etching also is to knock off any of the exposed fibers, even though we're going to be re-exposing fibers. But you don't want, like, fuzz sticking out. Um, the sealant is has two purposes a it's to uh, prevent the as an added insurance for ethanol in your fuel but it also helps seal any exposed fibers because those fibers are kind of like a candle wick um, so if you don't seal the inside of your fuel tank the the fuel will get in those fibers and slowly wick its way out and anywhere where it's exposed will on the fuel tank, it'll be great because it's covered in gel coat, so you wouldn't have to worry about that. Where you would worry about fuel wicking is where there's cuts, anywhere there's a cut. So there would be a potential for fuel to wick out and it would ruin any paint job. So henceforth, like I said, there's a dual purpose for using the tank sealer. Tank sealer is also is a, to help with ethanol resistance and to uh, seal any exposed fibers that may be to prevent any kind of wicking. So now that we have this done, we'll come back to uh, getting this thing set up for, I'm not going to do it tonight, it's getting late in the evening, um, <clears throat> but we're gonna uh, mix up some more putty and do the joining of these two halves. As you can see, now they kind of set together like so. And then show you how I apply it on here, the, the putty for gluing it, and then the amount of clamps that it takes. It takes a lot of clamps. I try to make sure I got a good pressure all the way around the seams. I'll make sure it's really nice and tight. So anyways, when we come back, we will be covering actual sealing of it.